Good afternoon guys, Marie here from Archegos Farmstead Ship. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that huge haze in the sky right now, it's kind of brown. Um, I did talk to the sheriff's office today and there is a controlled burn. Um, you can see by the trees and everything moving, for me it's a bit windy for uh, a controlled burn today. I have a lot of ash flying on my property. So I wanted to talk today real quick about emergency preparedness. Um, I did spend a little time in the emergency preparedness world for a couple years um, back when I lived in Colorado. Um, you guys know I've mentioned before that I have um, kind of went through the Waldo Canyon fire and that was a devastating fire for the city of Colorado Springs. Um, and it just goes to show you how weather and uh, things can make things change really quickly. Um, so there are so many homesteading channels out there that talk about so many things, um, but I don't know how many really touch on the topic of being prepared in an emergency. We talk about food shortages and, and feed shortages and things like that, but uh, have you really thought through if a fire uh, comes through your property or near your property, what you're going to do? Right now I have... A goat, as you know, Miss Maybelline is getting ready to give birth any day now. I have two other goats. I have six dogs here on my property and a cat. And I'm even finding myself a little bit unprepared if I had to evacuate my property. I have plenty of kennels and things and we would make it work for sure. Um, but I just wanted to put that thought in your head today. Um, I'm just a little concerned. Uh, because I can't be here this afternoon uh, because of working and so I just want you guys to really really think about when you're moving out to a rural area what you're gonna do if if you have a situation where you have to evacuate uh, more so than a tornado and you know there are some things we can't control fire you can't always control either uh, but fire can be absolutely devastating and can come really quickly and catch you off guard and so it's really smoky here there's a lot of ash falling on everything so I'm actually getting prepared to lock all my animals up right now so that way if for any reason this did turn bad I have them all in one spot and so I can gather them up quickly they're not out in their pens running around and um because they're also going to sense if something is not quite right. So I just wanted you guys to, to think about what you're going to do. Uh, do you have a trailer? Do you have kennels? How many animals do you have? Do you know where to go? Usually it's probably around here going to be a county fairground of some sort. Or, you know, I'm sure there's other ranches or um, homesteading properties that would open up for people. But when you live in such a rural area everybody has the same problem thank goodness i don't have cattle or any kind of larger animals um because at that point without having a huge uh trailer to transport them in um we'd all be kind of screwed in that situation and excuse my french so to speak but it just really made me think a lot harder about uh, the emergency preparedness piece of homesteading and what you're going to do for your animals in the case that you have to leave. So, um, winds 15 miles per hour here. Um, it's super dry. We've had rain and things like that, but I mean, it's made a dent in a little bit of the drought issue that we have, but but not enough. I mean, if something sparks, something's going to spark. So. I did actually talk to the sheriff's office and it is controlled. Um, I just, I, I'm a little bit taken back that they, they would allow that to happen today, but, um, you know, I guess they're at the ready, but, um, so just think about that kind of stuff today, guys. Um, what you would do in the event of emergency, where you would go. Do you have, um, a way to take, take your animals? Do you have a way to take feed? Uh, do you have all your documents and everything you need? in one localized place if you're at work and you know your teenager is the only one home can you say hey billy bob go get the file on the office table and they'll know exactly what to do so it may be that time to start having conversations with your family and those that you live with and start uh doing some dry runs um today has been uh 
a little bit of an eye opener for me today to just reevaluate my preparedness because um, I'm really not where I should be. Um, and I am one of those people who preach it, but um, I may not be following it to a T like I should. So uh, just some, some food for thought today, guys. I will flip the camera around. You can see where the haze is diminishing just a little bit. Um, but the smell of smoke is so strong in the air. My deck has uh, just ash all over it. Um, you know, that ash gets into the water. You can see the haze all along there to the south of me. All that is just haze, smoke haze. Um, so prayerfully, there will be no issues. But uh, just want you guys to think about that. I'm going to be doing some hard thinking today and making sure I'm more prepared, especially as we start getting into uh, drier months and summertime is starting to come. Um, you guys, we have to really take stock of what we need to do in the event of emergency, uh, tornadoes, floods, all that stuff. But if you had to leave your home and you only had 15 minutes, what are you going to do? when you got animals and you got livestock and things like that. If I had to evacuate today, I might be a little fortunate that I don't have baby goats, but uh, what would that do to Miss Maybelline with the stress of trying to stuff her in a kennel and put her in the back of my truck and to, to just go through that whole ordeal? Uh, it just really makes me think. So again, just some food for thought today. Uh, make sure you have a plan. I'm definitely going to be working on my plan and going to be working on um, uh, a dry run uh, with my family here pretty soon. Um, fortunately, we have family in the city, uh, not too, too far from here, um, but uh, they don't have the ability to, <laughs> to take in goats. We could finagle the dogs and a cat. <laughs> Um, it'd be super, super stressful for everybody involved. Um, but, uh, I'm not sure what I would do with my goats. So, uh, just really think about things, really plan things out and, you know, take the extra time instead of watching Netflix tonight here on a Friday night. Why don't you order pizza and sit down with your family and say, Hey, you know, the what ifs are super scary, but if you can walk through scenarios, the day that hopefully that never comes but if that day does come you'll have a little bit more calmness knowing that you have a plan write it out with your family take a picture make sure you got backups of birth certificates social security cards home insurance policies car insurance policies if you go to a shelter they're going to want all that information if you are on prescriptions make sure you know your doctor your pharmacy your refill number all of those things you know check on your family members or neighbors or friends that have disabilities um that was one of the big things when Waldo Canyon fire came. Uh, it took three days to get interpreters on the news. So you had an entire community who was deaf and hard of hearing, who had no idea what was going on. You know, you can only read lips and see that stuff so, so much on a TV screen. And all you see at the bottom is saying evacuate, evacuate. When there's nobody to tell you in your native tongue or your native language or American Sign Language that you got to go. That's really scary. Um, so don't forget about those communities and don't forget about those people. Their lives and their property and their animals and such are, are just as important as, as ours and as yours. So um, sorry for the rant today, but um, I got to get working on being a little bit more prepared. We want to be self-sustainable and all this stuff, but sometimes I think we just forget about um, the emergencies and the, and the bad stuff that could come. So... Um, I hope this video finds you guys well. I hope it gives you some food for thought. I hope you guys take some time with your family and your friends and your loved ones and animals to take stock of what you would do and how you would evacuate and where you would go. So, uh, love you guys. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. We are still waiting for babies. Um, still no babies yet. So, we're just keeping our fingers crossed and I'll let you guys know as soon as that happens. So, take care everybody. Blessings.